let's talk about power in Nigeria for a moment, shall we? I mean, electrical power. If every Nigerian residence is supplied 24 hours of electrical power per day, and then the power distribution companies offer premium service in terms of getting added value if you pay extra, I would have no problems at all with premium power. For instance, if the power grid is down nationwide and power companies have to switch to another source of power to ensure that their pre premium customers get power back immediately, while the rest of us mere mortals have to wait a few hours for the problem to be fixed, that would be fair. If you want such value added, pay extra. Unfortunately, the situation I've just painted will only happen when we have a new government in power. This government has given up on power. Pata, pata. Maybe they're waiting for the Mabila Power Project. So for a country that needs over 600,000 megawatts of electricity for every citizen and organization to get access to constant power, allocating a huge portion of the 5,000 megawatts that we can currently transmit from the about 10,000 megawatts that we can currently generate to the rich and very rich is criminal. Hold your horses, I will explain. After power generation and distribution were privatized and government held onto transmission, which means the government is still in the middle of the value chain, Government remain the problem of electrical power supply in Nigeria. How? Genkos, the generating companies say they have the capacity to generate 10,000 megawatts of power. Discos, the distribution companies say they only receive 5,000 megawatts. Who is in the middle? The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. Every time we drive to transmit more than 5,000 megawatts of power, the power grid collapses. Old equipment, old government. In 2022 alone, the power grid has collapsed eight times. The power grid has collapsed 98 times under President Buhari. Government excuses that power transmission is a national security issue. They can't relinquish. Can they at the very least improve on the capacity? While we are dealing with that, we are now approached with premium power where willing buyers meet willing sellers. Meaning, the same government personnel and upper middle class of the country can now move into premium estates and enter into contracts with the power holding company of Nigeria, PHCN, to pay higher for electricity and get up to 22 hours supply of power per day. Waiting poor man do now for this country. If the extra income made from this willing buyers is not pumped back into the system to increase the capacity of the whole value chain, it will mean that even areas designated for 10 to 15 hours of power per day will be shortchanged to fulfill the contractual obligations of providing 22 hours of electricity daily for the premium customers. I predicted this in 2017. We're getting there now. As more people hear of premium power and they think of the attendant headaches of fueling their power generating sets, willing buyers will increase. Supply to unwilling buyers and the poor masses will reduce. I have nothing against maximizing your profits, but the principles of equity will suggest that the power supply to these premium customers should not come from our power grid. After all, there are independent power projects everywhere. Someone accused me of being holier than thou, but why don't I send my children to public schools if I believe everyone should be on the same level? This is a wrong comparison. Even though public schools are not enough to admit all school children in Nigeria, they're pretty much free and available for everyone. That we choose better quality education and environment for our children to school in is a matter of choice and affordability. The jury is still out on whether private schools even provide better quality education. They may speak better English. But in over six years that I've joined the collaboration schools debate, public schools pupils always have done better than their counterparts from private schools. Now imagine that governments funded schools adequately, provide all the necessary teaching aids, and the best teachers in the country are employed and paid well, then reserve the high quota of public schools admissions for people who can pay for premium tuition. That will no longer be just. In the same light, it is unfair that the people who are in the best position to solve Nigeria's power problems can opt for premium power and be wondering why the rest of us are complaining about lack of power. Before, the rich and powerful were the only ones who had power generating sets. The poor masses put on kerosene lamps. Now, the rich and powerful cannot even be bothered to buy expensive diesel and maintain their generators. The paying premium to get their available power power that is yet inadequate for our population. Please, 
let's vote in a government that will solve Nigeria's power problems in 2023. You and I will succeed. <music>